So using Cavalieri's principle, which is also known as the method of indivisibles, we'll show that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we're just going to use these facts right here. So we'll get back to those in a second. But uh, we'll start by drawing a hemisphere. And this hemisphere is going to have radius r. So that will make the height here also r, right? Distance from there to there. And we are going to have a cylinder over here, also of, of height r. And from this cylinder, we are going to cut out a cone that's facing down like this. So here, I'm going to cut out a cone. Oh, and the radius of this cylinder and the cone is going to be r. So let's see what the, what's the volume of this coneless cylinder. Well, we just said that the height is the height is r and the radius is r, so the volume of the cone is one third pi r squared times r, which is one third pi r cubed. And likewise, the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared times r, which is pi r cubed. And if we have pi r cubed and we take out one third pi r cubed, then the volume here is two thirds pi r cubed. And we're going to see why that this, this uh, hemisphere is, um, the volume is the same as the uh, coneless cylinder. So how are we going to do that? Let's imagine we take a sword and we cut through at height h. So we just slip right through here, right through there, and cut through at height h, h, okay? So over here, what do we, what, what, what does the cross section look like? It looks like an annulus, just like this. All right, so circle with a piece cut out, and over here we have a circle. So which one should we do first? Which one, what are we going to compare these areas? Let's find this one first because we can unleash the Pythagoras here. How are we going to find the area of this? What we really need is this, this, the radius right here, and I'm going to call that z. And how do we find that? We are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. This distance must also be r, right, to any point on the sphere. And this distance we said right here was h, right? We went up h units. Well, it must be true, and I'll just go with yellow here. That z squared plus h squared must be equal to r squared. So z squared is equal to r squared minus h squared, or z is equal to the square root of r squared minus h squared. Didn't need to make that step. And you'll see why in a second, because when we find the um, area, the area of this circle, it's pi times z squared, which is just pi times r squared minus h squared. What about, let's go over to this guy now. Let me erase my sword. Let's get that out of there. Okay, so what is that? This is just the outer circle. Subtract the inner circle. Well, with the outer circle, the radius is r. And the inner circle, I should do this in, what's the, what's the radius of the inner circle? Well, if we go um, up h, since this is uh, this is proportional, it's up r, right? From here to here, it's up r, and over r. If we go up h, it must be over h. So this distance, I should do it in blue. This distance right here is h. So we have that distance right there is h. And areas pi r squared minus pi h squared gives us pi r squared minus h squared. That's the area of this. So 
if each of these um, cross sections have the same area, then when we sum up all of these areas, it must be true that the volume inside, the volume of this coneless cylinder must be equal to the volume of this hemisphere. Well, we just said the volume right here of the coneless cylinder is two-thirds pi r cubed, so the volume of the sphere is twice the volume of the hemisphere, which is twice the volume of our coneless cylinder. So it must be 4 thirds pi r cubed.